Well, here we are. It's the big moment, the Women's T20 World Cup final. And I guess there's a lot to unpack around what this match means. What's your big take on that? Well, it means South Africa are in a World Cup final. So that's the most important thing. It's the third T20 World Cup final that they've reached after the women got there last February. The men got there this June. And now the women have got there again. It's the fourth final they've reached in the last 12 months after the Springboks not just got to the final, but beat New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup. And it's just about a year ago. It was October 28. I remember it really well. It was a moment that united a nation. And I think that's what South Africa are going to bring to this event. Sport is so much more than a game in South Africa. It has been since 1995 when the box won the World Cup for the first time. They also beat New Zealand then. And it's just something that brings people of diverse race, class, socioeconomic circumstances, gender. It brings the country together. It's one of the very few things that does. And so South Africa are not going out there with 11 players. They're going out there with 68 million. And that's a lot compared to New Zealand's 4 million. The other reason this is significant is that we will have a new champion. And you must be delighted about that. Yes, I was just about to say that is exactly right. And I think what we have talked about a lot in the lead up to this tournament was there was all that expectation on the big three, your Australia, your England, your India. They're long gone. We are now looking at two teams that we didn't expect to be here against a lot of odds. They have made it. And as you say, we're going to have a new champion. New Zealand's path has not been easy. They came into this tournament on a 10 match losing streak, have managed to get it to come together since that first up win against India. I think they really took a lot of confidence from that. And now they've also played quite a close match against West Indies in the semi-final. So I think if they can get through those two big challenges, they're going to be going into this thinking anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. That's the beauty of finals, right? Once you get there, all bets are off. And it's really just about what happens on the day. But both teams are quite nicely matched. South Africa didn't win one of six series after the final last year. Then they beat Pakistan just on the eve of this tournament. They had a pretty good World Cup. They started well, little kind of uh, mistakes against England, but that was in Sharjah and we've forgotten Sharjah now. We're here in Dubai and the final will be taking place in Dubai, which actually really suits the South African game. So I think we've got two pretty evenly matched sides when it comes to form and history and even to an extent expectation because New Zealand at the last World Cup had a lot of expectation. And in fact, what happened there was that South Africa bowled them out very cheaply in Paul. Again, that's fresh in the memory. None of this actually matters, though. History doesn't matter when it comes to a World Cup final. What matters is those three, three and a half hours in the middle when the game is won and lost, when the trophy is won and lost, and when dreams are made or absolutely dashed. So I'm so looking forward to this, and I think it's going to be an absolute cracker. And so I guess if we're looking at what happens within the match, we can look at a couple of key things or matchups that we think might decide the result. Mm -hmm. One thing for me is going to be Eden Carson. Mm -hmm. New Zealand's young spinner. She's like the new <laughs> generation. <laughs> she loves it. She loves, she loves that, right? She does. She played a magnificent power play against West Indies. They were defending a really small total and she actually got New Zealand on top of the match in that first six overs. She's going to be up against the two best run scorers of the tournament so far. Laura Wolpart and Tasman mm -hmm. Brits. They have taken on the power play magnificently mm -hmm. and you know that that has got South Africa through the tournament, I think, more than once. So to see how she performs, you know, mm -hmm. relative newcomer to very experienced players, I think that's going to be a really key head to head. Yeah, that's a great matchup. And the other one that I'm interested in is what happens after Kerr and Cup. So we know that both sides are batting really well. They're top heavy sides. New Zealand after Kerr. Do things get a little bit iffy there? Do they have enough firepower? And South Africa after Cup, they've got two very experienced players, Chloe Tryon and Sune Lise, but neither of them have had much opportunity and neither of them are coming in with any form to back them up. So if the bowling sides, and I think they're probably both stronger bowling sides, these two teams, can get through the top four, are we going to have this middle order tussle to see who takes the trophy? And uh, I think it's going to be a game where there'll be a bit of cat and mouse. This week we've had some exceptional games of cricket. They've all been knockout games. They've all been if not close, very tense. And so that's what we want. We want a final that keeps us on the edge of our seats. We want something like what the Springboks had when they won by just one point. We, so we want those small margins. And of course, what South Africa wants is somebody else to do something so that we can stop saying Springboks. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. And uh, we will be talking to you again after the final.